Welcome to the HCMC podcast for ultrasound guided intravenous peripheral line placement. In this video, we will first review the technique for proper peripheral IV placement. We will then outline how to use the ultrasound to improve your success in patients with difficult IV access. IV placement is a fundamental technique of emergency department resuscitation. Unfortunately, many patients have difficult IV access due to multiple factors, including obesity, a history of multiple IV placements and prior intravenous drug use. Ultrasound guidance has been shown to facilitate IV catheter placement in patients with difficult IV access. First, let's review the anatomy of the veins of the arm. In the anterior arm, the cephalic vein runs along the lateral aspect of the arm. The basilic vein runs along the medial aspect. The median cubital vein runs in the anacubital fossa connecting these two veins. This will be your most commonly used site of access as it is often the largest and most superficial vein. Before starting your IV, collect all the supplies you will need. This will include the needle and catheter, a tourniquet, a saline lock and saline flush, antiseptic swab, blood transfer device, and blood tubes. Apply a tourniquet to the upper arm by placing it underneath the arm, crossing above the arm, and tucking the overlying end under the middle portion of the opposite end, creating a loop as shown. Using universal precautions, palpate with your index finger of your non-dominant hand along the anterior arm. Veins should feel soft, elastic, resilient, and should be pulseless. Once you have found an appropriate site, clean the area with an antiseptic swab. Stabilize the vein with your thumb and forefinger as veins have a tendency to roll away from the approaching needle. Take the catheter with your dominant hand between your thumb and forefinger. Make sure the bevel is pointed up. Insert the catheter parallel to the course of the vein at an angle of 10 to 30 degrees to the patient's skin. Puncture the vein with firm pressure and watch for the flash of blood within the catheter. Once the flash of blood is seen, flatten the angle of the needle and advance one to two millimeters to ensure that the needle tip is fully within the vessel. While holding the needle still, slide the catheter over the needle and into the vein. Remove the needle and occlude the tip of the catheter to prevent extravasation of blood. Remove your tourniquet. If needed, attach the blood transfer device and draw blood by placing the vacuum tubes onto the covered needle. After blood draw, flush the catheter with 5 cc of saline. The saline flush should flow smoothly into the catheter. If resistance is felt, the catheter may not be in the vein, or it may be occluded by the vessel wall, a valve on the vein, or a kink in the catheter. Observe for any evidence of infiltration, such as pain, edema, or ecchymosis. Ultrasound Guidance While most patients have veins that are easily cannulated with the standard technique, IV access can be complicated in patients who do not have easily visualized or palpable superficial veins. This can be caused by increased superficial tissue, as in obesity or edema, or by scarring and thrombosis of superficial veins in frequently hospitalized patients or IV drug users. In this setting, ultrasound guidance can be extremely useful. The vascular probe of the ultrasound will help you to visualize the venous anatomy of superficial veins and to approach deeper veins that are not palpable. First, apply a tourniquet to the upper arm. Place the vascular probe transversely on the patient's anterior arm with the dot on the probe facing to the right. Increase the depth on the ultrasound to better visualize the first three or four centimeters below the skin. Each mark on the side of the monitor corresponds to one centimeter of depth. There are multiple possible places to start an ultrasound guided IV, but a good place to begin looking is in the antecubital fossa. An alternative would be the proximal anterior arm along the course of the cephalic and basilic veins. The basilic vein runs with the ulnar and median nerve, so care should be taken not to injure these structures with cannulation. The deep brachial vein runs its course 
down the middle of the anterior arm and is another site for cannulation. Caution is advised when attempting to cannulate the deep brachial vein as it runs with the deep brachial artery and care must be taken to ensure you do not cannulate the artery. A suitable vein will appear as a round hypoechoic area within the tissue. Veins will be compressible with gentle pressure applied by the probe and they should be non-pulsatile. Arteries will have firmer walls and visible pulsations, especially visible when gentle pressure is applied. When a suitable vein is found, visualize the length of the vein to find the most superficial, easily accessible site. Make sure that your vessel is not too deep to be reached by your catheter. The length of standard IV catheters is about 3 centimeters. Longer catheters are available and are recommended for cannulation of deeper veins. In very deep veins, the Seldinger technique with catheter placement over a guide wire may be necessary to secure IV placement. With your catheter in your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand on the probe, approach the vessel at a steeper angle than for a normal IV start. An angle of 45 degrees is usually appropriate. It may be helpful to have an assistant position and stabilize the patient's extremity. Watch on the monitor as your needle approaches the vein. You should see the vein walls and surrounding tissue being compressed by the needle. Bouncing the needle gently can help you to locate the tip on the monitor. When in position, puncture the vein with firm pressure and observe for the flash of blood in the needle. After the flash is seen, advance the needle 1 to 2 millimeters further, then advance the catheter over the needle. Draw blood, flush and secure the line as with any peripheral IV. Be sure to wipe the site dry of ultrasound gel to facilitate securing the catheter in place. With minimal practice, ultrasound guided IV placement can significantly improve your success in patients with difficult access. Yeah.